Welcome to Backyard Planking. My name is Charles. I'll be your host as we go through and explore everything BB and pellet related from air pistols to air rifles, targets, and ammo. Now, this one's going to be a little different because I've had a lot of questions from people about sighting in their scopes or having problems and, you know, some kind of optic issue. You know, a lot of you guys that, um, you know, you've been around for a while, you, you already know all of this stuff, and but you know you also know that there's no perfect answer um, what I'm going to try to do is some of you people that have questions about this stuff citing it in or you know some issues I'm going to show you some tips and techniques that I use would they work for everybody eh, maybe maybe not the point is to give you an idea to give you a starting point that way you can take it and run with it from there you know it's just like any other idea, you see, hear, smell, touch, taste something, gives you an idea, you build on it, and you go with it. That's what we're going to do here. Now, it's going to be a little funky, but see any other camera right there? I'm going to be using the Gamo Swarm, mainly because I don't have to reload it. I can do 10 shots and, and not have, you guys don't have to wait. Now, if you look at that thing, use it. the very first shot was the one that was at the bottom. Now, here's the first thing, if you're going to be sighting in an optic, that's an easy way to go. The first shot was really low, and a little left. And you see how it progressed up and up and up. One of the things, if you're going to go through and work and try to sight in a scope, pick one move at a time. You know, if it's shooting low and left, don't try to adjust up and right. Do one at a time. And you can see where it kept moving up until it got to the point where everything was kind of grouped together and we're right at the red dot. So we know we're high enough, we just needed to go just a little right. Now, most of the stuff that you run across, whether it's the little Tascos, uh, some of the center point stuff, stuff from Boomerx, whatever, they all say one click is a quarter inch at a hundred yards. Well, you know, I moved closer, that's 15. <laughs> so sometimes if you click it one time, it might not even move. Not this close. You see what I'm saying? you might have to get five clicks on it just to get it to go high enough where you can tell the difference it's 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 really odd you know it has to do with MOAs and all of that kind of stuff but whatever plus the fact that you're shooting a pellet I mean it's it's not perfect you're not using uh, modern propulsion you're just blowing it out with air so got to be a little give and take anyway so we moved it just a little bit right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a shot at the center spot and then something cool I'm going to show you. All right, so by working it up first to, <clears throat> to make sure you're at the right height, then you know how far you need to move left or right. If you try to do both of them at the same time, trust me, you, you can do it. Don't get me wrong. But you just, you'll be messing with it and screwing around with it and all of that kind of stuff. All right, so here's the other thing before I forget. Once you've got your distance established you're set where you need to be with your optic you have to take into consideration that if you shoot closer 
or further away, it's going to change. Now, it's not always going to be consistently high or low if you're doing up close or out there. You need to do it a couple of times to kind of figure out where the optic, you know, where the air gun is, is, is going to go to because they can all be different doesn't really have anything to do with the up and down or left and right sometimes not always sometimes it has something to do with a parallax that's in here now that's basically your focal plane um, some high-end stuff you can adjust the parallax to get a, a better focus at different you know whatever these not so much but to give you an example now saw that we were dead center 14 yards, whatever it is. Now we're back over here about seven and a half, almost eight. And I'm sure three or four more shots It'll go right back in the same place. Yeah, I mean, they're grouped together a pencil lid apart. So do it several times. That way you know. See, okay, normally I shoot here, but I see something here I want to take a shot at. Remember to yourself, I go low, I go high, whatever it is. So. This one shooting low, what I would have to do is just aim basically up to the top of the diamond. And we're in the red. Not that hard. I mean, it's, you know, it kind of is what it is. Now, all right, so the next thing you really want to remember is weight grain changes. Now, I used a little 7.4 destroyers from Crossman. A lot. Cheap. They're easy to find. But if you sight this thing in for a certain weight grain at a certain distance, and then all of a sudden you run out of those, well, I'll just use these other things. That can alter a lot of stuff. So, in just a second here, we're going to load. Two different weight grains right here the first one the first shot back at our target there is going to be the 7.4 grain destroyers from Crossman like I said I use a lot of them they're cheap they're easy to find the second one it's going to be these little 10.6 grain crossbow so um, lower right I guess see how much of a difference there is Seven point four grain. The second shot is the ten point six. A lot heavier. Same target. Low and a little left. Now that's one other consideration to keep in mind if you start mix matching weight grains and stuff like that you can actually throw yourself off so I hope this was at least a little informative I mean, give you a starting point give you somewhere to go you know and <laughs> sometimes you just got to be creative many years ago Many years ago, when I was young, 
had a buddy. He didn't have one of the little Tasco scope things. I mean, he had one that was, you know, not as high tech as some of the ones we have nowadays. But uh, the thing, it, it shot right. Every no matter what he did, right, 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 right. So we messed around with it. We were young. We didn't have no money. I mean, it wasn't like he could just go buy another one, which which was what I would suggest now. So we took it out one afternoon. I had a brilliant idea. Now, if you looked through the scope, it's like a lot of the optics nowadays. You see the crosshairs, and then outside of the crosshairs, it's a little wider. So his shot consistently right, spun it all the way out. It hit on the right hand side every time. A little low maybe, always on the right hand side, right where it started to widen up. I had a brilliant idea. Normally the scope is mounted like this, up and down, left and right. I loosened it, we turned it that way. Every time he shot, it was right at the top of the, you know, he used it for years. He bought a new scope and kept using that one because he knew where it shot then. So, I mean, you know, sometimes something ridiculous like that. But I hope this helped a little bit. Pick one at a time, up or down, left or right, get that part squared away, then go with the rest of it. Remember, your distance changes. Remember your weight changes. If you put all that stuff together, then make it a little bit easier on you. At least I hope. Till next time, my name is Charles. This has been Backyard Blinky. Oh, how far? Do it.